We're live. Okay. Everybody's looking at everyone. Are we live? We're here. Welcome to the October Patchwork Party, everyone. It's good to see you. And I'm glad you're joining us tonight. We have lots and lots of things to show you tonight. And we want to make sure that you comment. Hello. <laughs> okay. Keep talking. Okay. Be sure to comment below. Keep, okay, be sure to comment below and during our whole presentation, whether I'm upside down, backwards, or in between. Because um, tonight we're giving away um, five $5 gift cards to people who comment. So make sure that you comment. Make sure that you follow us on Facebook, and I hope you follow us on YouTube as well. So let's get started tonight. I've got lots and lots of things to show you, and I'm going to kind of mosey around the room a little bit like I usually do and we're gonna start over here with welcome fall this is a fabulous little quilt it's 53 by 60 we have kits available and don't forget that anything that you see here tonight is on our um, website under patchwork party and you're gonna put in the pa uh, code PP20 to get 20% off of anything that's in the patchwork website so make sure you check that out after or during our little presentation tonight so here is this is a panel so the project starts with a panel and we've got um, the, all the little panel pieces kind of um, squared off with some of these beautiful burlap fabrics so they look like they look like burlap but they're not but so they add a lot of texture and richness to the quilt and then along the bottom and the sides is this really really fun border print so welcome fall is the name of this quilt then we took and we made i think this is going to be stuck under here we made a little table topper called check it out fall and i think i could pop it out there we go check it out fall and it's about 20 inches square very simple quick and easy in an afternoon so you're going to strip piece your little checkerboard going around and I just quilted it with just a little um, diagonal squares all the way through the center and a little diagonal coming out on the border so really fun little sunflowers called check it out and it is about 20 inches big and we have oops we also have just the patterns as well so you can buy the kit or just the pattern then we're going to and here's the little kits for the welcome fall project then we have a little display here this i've been working on for a long long time and i was going to do a class and then the world turned upside down so we haven't been doing classes but i think you can do these at home and have a lot of fun and make some really great gifts for the holidays so let me tell you a little bit about these bags these bags come packaged up so this is the little zipper pouch i have not made the zipper perch purse yet but i'm planning on it so they come with everything that you need including the hardware because you know that the hardest thing about doing these is finding all of your hardware and getting all the right clasps and clips and handles and everything so it comes with everything that you need to make your purse so this one came the little clutch came with the purse straps as well as the little opener closer thing okay so this one this zipper pouch opens up with a zipper on top and look at how it comes Ta-da! you do not even have to sew in a zipper how awesome is that all you need to do is embellish it in any way you want do you want to say hi jim yes please <laughs> jim is on his way out say hi <laughs> Hey everybody! Wow, the light is unbelievable here. <laughs> it's not just Karen that's so bright, it's the lights too. But great to see you. Have fun. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Soon. Take care. See you soon. Thanks, Thanks, Joe. Yes, we got new lights and I got a little microphone so that if I turn around, hopefully my voice does, the sound doesn't go down and then back up again and hopefully stays nice and even as we go along and do our projects. So check this out. The zipper is already sewn in. You embellish it in any way you want. I embellished this little um, card holder. So it's a little credit card holder with one of these really fun little wool flowers. 
And these come, these are from um, Sue, love Sue Spargo. Um, she does these little packages of flowers that are already cut out. You don't have to cut, you don't have to trace. They all come with all of the little pieces and it makes one flower. And she has four color waves of the flowers. I'm gonna kind of hold that out so Joe can kind of take a picture of that. Four different flower color, color ways in each pack. And they also come with little cards to tell you how to make little stitches. So these are cute, very fun. It comes with a piece, of, so when this shows purple, it comes with the piece of purple. I did not use it on this, but it comes with a square of the color that you see. So I just used some of these fun, they're called Alana threads that we have here in the store from, um, from Aurifil. So they come on a little tube like this and you can actually put these in your sewing machine. You can thread these through your needle of your sewing machine and I stitch this whole thing on my sewing machine without even doing it by hand. There are needles that have a little bit bigger eye for your sewing machine, I would suggest that. But otherwise, I had Deco Bob in the bottom, the, um, the Alana in the top, and it stitched just perfect. So this one came with the little handle, the little, the little clasps, and two little pockets. So it's already cut out. You don't have to trace it. You don't have to measure it. Your pieces come all ready to sew on. So the little um, zipper purse has a little pocket. So you could put this pocket anywhere. You could put it on the inside, put it on the outside, do some machine embroidery on your, on your purse, do some wool, do some applique. This is the large clutch. They have a smaller clutch and I looked at that and I was like, why? It was very small. So this I thought is just the right size and what a cute shape this is. So for this one, I used some of our Renaissance ribbon. These are the Tula Pink ribbons that match our, the homemade fabrics from Tula Pink. And she has three packs. One, the one coordinates with the morning and then the afternoon and then the evening. So there's five different um, ribbons in here, one yard per ribbon. Yes. All righty. So um, Renaissance ribbons from Tula Pink, they match the homemade fabrics, which is what I used on my little clutch bag. So I just stitched on some of those ribbons and kind of put them diagonally just for fun. <coughs> and then I used one of the ribbons as a binding around part of the purse and then just stitched some of the fabric. And this is just filled with fluff because I wanted it to be um, nice and puffy. And so you can see it has a, it's a nice size inside and I just covered it with fabric and off I went. It took me, you know, a couple hours one afternoon and added, and all I had to do is add my handle and I was good to go. So there's that. I'm gonna get these kind of out of the way a little bit. So there's the zipper purse. There's the card holder. There is also a small, do I have this one open? No. There's also a um, book cover or project bag, they're calling it. And this, I think, um, like Lisa said, she said, I think I could put my Kindle in here. So she's going to get one to put her Kindle in. It has um, two little pockets, the little flaps to put your book in or your projects. It already has the zipper bag already pre-made. So all you have to do is stitch it on into the inside. So you don't even have to make the little zipper part of the zipper bag. So this one is all set and ready to go. And this one is missing. It also has a piece of elastic and I don't know what I did with it. It's probably still in the bag. But they come with, um, they always come with the pins to pin your project together. I personally use my binder clips but she adds pins to it. And then she also adds some hand needles. So she's thought of everything with these. So they're really fun. They're made out of wool. I think they're wool and acrylic actually. So they're not 100% wool, but they're really, really nice. Then this one is called the, I forgot, the Grace Tote. And this one's a little bit bigger. 
And this has handles, a long, big long handle like this as well. And I've just kind of started working on some um, embellishments on this one. So I've got my front done. This one came with a zipper pocket already, already sewn in. And I might, because I think I want to line my bag, I might just rip this off, line my bag and put it back on in some place, some place, shape or form. And this also comes, this also has like a side on it. So what you, all you have to do is sew your side on and add your handles and you're good to go. So you can embellish this in any way, shape or form you want. So I really like it. She gives you ideas in the instructions on different things that you can do to embellish, but you certainly can do just about anything you like on these bags. And it's great because you take it out and you're ready to go. Just perfect. The other thing that I wanted to tell you about um, with the Sue Spago packs, like I said, she's got um, four colorways of the flowers, but then she also has um, butterflies. And she has four colorways of the butterflies as well. Oops, sorry about that. And so these are the butterflies. So there's four different butterflies as well. Everything is all cut out, ready to stitch. So great. You do have to put your own, if you want to fuse them down onto your project, you do have to fuse, you have to add your own fusible stuff. But otherwise, they're all pre-cut and ready to go. All righty, so I think that's my whole story on those. We've got the ribbons for embellishment. We've got the colors, um, the floral with the four different colors and the butterflies with the four different colors. And you can just dig through your stash and do anything that you like on these little bags. This is just such a cute, cute shape. Put that back in there and off we go. Okay, then we have um, our football family rules. Well, so this is, I wanted to make just a generic, everybody, you know, yes, we all love the Packers, but sometimes you have to make a quilt for a non-Packer person. And um, this is just a generic football quilt, fun to take, to watch the kids play football, fun to have in, in your rooms, and, um, and just enjoy. So it's just a really fun project to do. So you use the panel for the center, and then you're just simply adding these borders Karen, and corner look pieces. Look this way when you're talking. And corner pieces. Oh, because you can't hear me. Right. Sorry. Um, so you're going to add these corner pieces as you go along, girls. And it's just a simple project. You can get this done in an afternoon or an evening, and get it to the quilter, and you'll have it ready for Christmas. Really quick project. Great project for the guys who love, love, love football. And don't they all? So, and I guess they're playing now. So we have a reason for a football quilt, which is really fun. Okay, then the next thing I'd like to show you tonight is kind of a Nifty Notions um, project or um, um, item. And that's this little vacuuming accessory kit. This is great for your sewing machine. So I was sewing over the, during the week and um, on my sewing machine, when I run out of bobbin thread, my machine beeps and it won't let you sew anymore. Well, I guess the underneath my sewing machine was like really dirty because it kept beeping and I had a full bobbin, but it wouldn't let me sew. So of course I'm turning it off, I turn it back on and then I take out, and if you don't have these in your arsenal, you, you should. They're the little micro brushes for cleaning out the bottom of your sewing machine, Bar around the bobbin, down inside, it grabs, it's the little, so it gets into all those little tight spaces, and then it also flexes. So I used to use a Q-tip. I think we've all used a Q-tip, and it's a little bit too big, and it's linty. This is not linty. This will grab the lint, pull it out. You can get into all the little crevices. So I was cleaning it out with this, and I thought, okay, I got it. So I put my machine all back together, turn it off, turn it back on, and it still would do it. So I did it, like, I cleaned it out, like, four times, and then... Then I said some bad words because it still wouldn't work. And there's like two things that happen in our house when I'm when I'm saying bad words in my sewing area. Um, first, either Joe goes in his office, closes the door, and I don't see him for an hour, or he brings me a glass of wine. Well, it was like 9.30 in the morning, so Joe kind of disappeared. I didn't get any wine. 
So I thought, okay, I've got to get this cleaned out. Otherwise, I got to bring it in. I don't have time to bring it in. I don't have time to gym to, to look at it, all that other stuff. So this connects to your vacuum. It connects to the hose of your vacuum or the tube that comes out. This connects right to it. And then you have all of these great little, oops, if I put it together, right? all of these great little attachments to get into your machine to clean. This was a lifesaver because I just put this on, put it on and went like kind of along the top of my sewing machine and it sucked out whatever was in there and whatever was interfering with that sensor for my bobbin. After I did this, it worked. I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because, you know, you don't want to use the canned air, and you don't want to blow into your machine because that just blows it into your machine. So you want it, you really want to just kind of, like, suck out all the bad juju that's in the bottom of your sewing machine. So this is also great for using on your, like, your computer keyboard. I use it in the car to get in those little crevices and those little spaces that you can't get to without, you know, your real vacuum, without a, with your big vacuum. So it is really, really a great tool. So this is in your the um, Patchwork Party section, and I think it's also in the Nifty Notion section of our, the website. But um, order it through the Patchwork Party section because you will get 20% off of this. So once I did this, it worked right away. And I thought, oh, from now on, I'm going to start there. And you're not going to put Jim and the boys in the back room out of business, but you, you're going to be happier and your machine is going to be happier. So that's my little story on that. It's a great little tool. You're going to love it. All right. I'm going to bounce back here and I'm going to turn around so that you hear me. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, Blessed Beyond Measure. I think I showed you this quilt um, last time it was not quilted, and now it is quilted. And then way up on top, I made a quilt holder. And so this is an old window, and I used some of the panel pieces and quilted those up and put them into a little window frame, and then added some little um, antique clips that I had. And now it's a beautiful quilt holder. So it's holding my um, blessed Beyond Measure quilt. So there's two panels. One, I think we talked about this last time, has the word sewing and then all of these little sewing motifs. The other panel has these larger blocks and there's more of those. Um, I don't think I have one of these open so I can pop one open. So this is the other larger one. <coughs> So we, may, we have kits for the table runner, and the table runner takes a panel. <clears throat> I'm gonna, oops, I'll keep walking. <laughs> this is the bigger panel that we used in the table runner. So this is very cute. And this I also used up in my window frame to make my, to make my um, quilt holder. Then... <coughs> There's also a pattern. There's also a pattern to make pillows. And these use a, these use um, charm squares. So we have the charm squares. And then this one is just kind of makes a little mini quilt. And it goes into a 16 by 20 frame when it's done. So you could also frame it and hang it on your wall. So it's very fun. So we have kits for these. The kit includes what you need to make both of these table runners. And you'll have panel pieces left over because we gave you the whole panel. So you'll have other panel pieces to do things with. So that's the, um, the table runners for this. We have the layer cakes, the jelly rolls, and the charm packs as well. So those, are all, those should all be on our website for purchase. So that's my story along for that. Plus, we do have all of the fabrics. So these have been um, really nice if you just love the colors, but you don't want to make a quilt, uh, a sewing quilt. You can just use these fabrics and just make a fabulous, fabulous quilt without it looking like a sewing quilt. Because they are really fun, fun prints. Okay, then up here we have our homegrown for the holidays quilt. And this is um, 54 by 59. And that comes in the little box that's down in front by Joe, someplace down there. And it comes all packaged up in this little in this little box from Moda. So it's all those are really nice. Everything that you need to make the quilt is in there except for the back. 
then you know me and stars and red, white, and blue. So I made a little, this little table topper has been sitting, this pattern has been sitting around in my back room and floating around my sewing table for a really long time. And we just got in this fabric called Branded by um, Moda. And so I made up this little table topper. We have kits available for this. It's about 24 inches square. And it also comes with these wide back, well, I wouldn't use, you could use them as wide backs, but they're a little bit heavier. They're like a canvas, but not real heavy canvas. So I, I see a tote bag of some kind in my future very soon. So I just have to, I, it's in my head. It just has to come out of my head and onto the fabric, but it's good. We're, we'll, it, maybe next time, maybe next time. Cause these are really nice. And they're, they're about six, they're 54 inches wide. So these are really nice and would make a great tote bag. So as long as I'm standing right here, I'm going to show you, we've had these decals before and somebody had called up and said, do you have those decals? I really want to get some because it's just the holiday time and it's fun to give them as gifts. So these are the little car decals. Um, this one says, this is how I roll. The other one is just a quilt with um, different quilt designs on it. Uh, running with runs with scissors. Oops. A vintage sewing machine. And kind of just a thimble and thread and buttons, some little notions. And um, love to sew. I think that's it. Yep, and then we're back to running with scissors. So these are really great to just put on the back of your car. I don't have one yet. I think I have to add one to my car. I just have to pick out the right one. So these are really fun to have. Then next, I'm not going to talk about that yet. Next, um, let's talk about um, the Quilt As You Go items. We've had Quilt As You Go things before, and I just want to show you, well, maybe not what's new, but new to us. We, they, have, they now have two different stocking designs. So they have, I think there's only one stocking in each package. This one felt really thick, so I thought maybe there were more. Um, but there's one stocking in each package. One is kind of has a diagonal stripe to it, and one is little squares. So fun quilt as you go, a great way to use up your scraps and make some stockings. They are about, it doesn't say what size they are. They're not huge. Doesn't really say, well, let's open it up and see. How about that? Since they're not going to tell you, they're a pretty good size, actually. So this is the size they come out to be. So they're about yay big. So you could actually make two stockings. You could make this for the front and use a plain fabric on the back and just and end up with two stockings. So there's two stockings about this size in each one. Then always very popular and people really like are the little dog bones for, the, for your dogs for their dishes. So those are fun. I think I think Padre, we're going to have to make one for Padre. <laughs> That's Joe's aunt uncle's dog. He's very cute. So I'm going to move that out of the way. But the new one that I really wanted to show you tonight was the little hanging hand towel. Isn't that cute? So if you've been making the mitts and the trivets and the drying mats, this is another great addition to that as if you're making a gift for someone to add in. So let me show you how to do this because the instructions were really good right up to the time when you need it because they do not tell you how big or how many of these pleats to make. And that's, to me, that was the hardest part. So let me tell you about how to put this together. So in your package, you will get the top for your hanging towel and a towel and the instructions for putting it all together. So these are really fun. I think I made this in about a half an hour. Let me show you how it's done. Let me get down to it. Okay. So you're going to cut two pieces of fabric, eight by 11, and that's going to be the front and the back of your towel. Okay. So here's my front, here's my back and eight by 11 for those. 
Then you're going to cut two pieces of fabric. I'm going to turn my iron on. Oh, it still feels hot. That's good. You're going to cut two pieces of fabric that are three by eight inches. And that's the little accent on the bottom of your toe here. Okie dokie. Easy so far. You can do this, right? Then you're going to cut a strip of fabric that's about 22 and a half inches by two inches. And that's going to be your little stripe on your on your towel here. Now you could add rickrack, you could use ribbon. So you could do anything on the bottom of that, but little ball fringe would be really cute. So you could, you could do a bunch of different things with this. So they call for a quarter of a yard. And I found of each of these fabrics, one, two, three fabrics, a quarter of a yard each. I found that I could probably make three of these towels with a quarter of a yard of three different fabrics. You could use fat quarters that would work as well. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is take your fabrics and you're going to fold this little flange in half and press it. Okay, you're going to do both of those. Press both of those. You are then going to take it and add it to the bottom of your eight and a eight inch by eleven inch. pieces of fabric. So you're going to do this. You're going to line it right up with that. Now I have directional fabric on this. So what you want to do is if you can read it and it's correct, when you flip it, it will be also be correct. If you put this so it reads upside down, when you flip it, it will also read upside down. So just keep that in mind as you're doing this. Now the same it holds true for your fabric if you are um, using a directional fabric for the front of your project and I have that I think I have it sewn in there um, so if you have a directional fabric you want your directional fabric to be on the front because if you use directional fabric on the back when you flip it this is going to be upside down it'll be right side up here but it will be upside down here so just put if you can use a directional fabric but just use it as your front not your back and I did that on, on my other one, but it's all kind of pinned together. So I'll show you that in a little while. So pin these on the bottom. You're going to stitch them together a quarter of an inch all the way straight along. Flip it and press it. And you're going to press your seam towards the top part. Okay. Then I took and I top stitched really close right along here. I just thought it made it look a little bit more finished off, a little bit nicer, made this seam sit, sit just a little bit flatter. They don't suggest that, but that's what I did. And you can do it or not do it. But I just stitched straight across here, stitched a quarter of an inch here, press it so that your seam goes up towards your larger piece of fabric. And then I just top stitched really close to that, to that seam line. All righty. Then you're going to take both of those pieces of fabric and you're going to put them right sides together and you're going to take your batting piece and you're going to take your ruler, lay it along the edge and you're going to trim off the bottom of this. Okay, so it ends up looking like this. Alrighty. Now that is going to lay, so right here I have both of my pieces of fabric, my fronts and my backs with my little uh, my little accent pieces laying together, right sides together. And then this is going to lay down right along your seam line. Okay, it's not going to come all the way down to the bottom. It's going to go right along the seam line that you sewed where you sewed this onto the top piece. You are then going to just, sit, then you're going to take your ruler and want that ruler don't want that one either this one you're going to take a ruler and a pen pretend this is a pen i don't know what i lost uh, with my frixion pen and just draw this line going straight down to the edge okay you're just going to extend this line straight down to the bottom here and straight down to the bottom on this side you'll start on this edge back stitch stitch all the way right on the line all the way around and all the way down on that line that you sew uh, drew and backstitch here. Want to make sure that you backstitch. That's really important. 
I pinned it in a couple places just to hold it in place so it doesn't move around a lot. And I also took this, when you, when you see this, I also took it and I ironed it nice and flat because I don't like all those folds in there. That bothers me. So I do that. Then I take, and it does not suggest you do this in the instructions, but I do. I take and I trim around my batting first. And I trim very close to my batting. That way I don't have a lot of this fabric or the um, batting in my seam making it bulky. If you look at this, this is very flat. And it's very flat because I trimmed this excess out. Alrighty, so I'm going to trim that all the way around. I'm going to just cut this off right here. And then I'll take my ruler and I'll trim. I pull my pins out, it's a little easier. I'll, pin, I'll trim a quarter of an inch from that drawn line. Okay, so we're going to trim off all the excess going all the way around. And I just use my ruler and my rotary cutter, make sure I don't cut too close to that corner. And I'll just come with the scissors and, tri and trim out that corner as I come around. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way around, trimming about a quarter of an inch all the way around this um, thy little tab. So when I do that, I end up with this, and I'm going to flip this up so you can see it. So you're going to end up with this. And when I finish trimming, I then take and I trim a little bit more on those little corners. Flatten them all out. Okay, so here I kind of trim at a diagonal, kind of trim a little diagonally here, trim a diagonally across the top, trim a little bit diagonally here, and then down in these two little corners, I make a little V. I, don't, I think you can kind of see that. So I make a little V right here and right here to get that bulk out of that corner. And now you can see I've trimmed really close to that batting. And in fact, I will take my sewing machine stitch line and just take that from 2.4 to maybe a 1.5. And then that way there, your stitching is a little bit tighter and a little bit closer and it makes it a little bit nicer. So then I take this and I turn it right side out. You can do this, right? This is so fun, so easy. So if you're making a whole bunch of these, you can just kind of mass produce them. Use my nice point turner, turn that all back right side out and give it a nice press. Okay, so there we go. Get these out of the way. So now we have the top done. Now we're ready to work on your towel. Now when you open up your towel, first thing, they tell you to wash it, and that's probably a really good idea because if you've ever used these waffle towels, you do know that they do shrink up a little bit. So you can wash pre-wash it if you like. I'm using these as decorative towels, so I probably won't ever have to wash them, except for when Joe picks them up and whips the floor up with it, then I'll probably have to wash them. But um, since it's kind of going to be buttoned onto something, it will be hard for him to get it off. He'll go for something easier. So, um, so hopefully I'm not going to wash these too often. But if you're giving them as a gift, you probably are going to want to wash this ahead of time. So you can take and just, if you have a serger, the easiest thing to do is just serge all the way around the edges. And then you don't have to worry about it fraying out. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is hem the bottom of your towel. Now, when you pull it out, you automatically think that this is the bottom and this is the top and these are the sides. Not the case. Okay, Your towel actually goes this direction. These are the top and bottoms. These are the sides. Okay, So the first thing you're going to do is hem right along the bottom of your towel. So when I do that, I usually have it all nicely pressed out because I'm all done. So you, what the first thing you're going to do is get out your seam gauge so that you can turn this up about a quarter of an inch. So we all have these, right? We've all got a seam gauge, hem gauge from our garment sewing days. I know, you know, you've got them. And you've got a couple because one has its little has its little guide on it, one's lost its guide, maybe one is bent, they always bend, all that kind of stuff. Um, get rid of it. What you want is this. This is the hot press tool. So remember how you have to fold this up 
and you hold it here and you're trying to iron and then this gets hot and you can only go this far, forget it. This lays all the, you've got 10 inches here of measuring length, first of all. Secondly, I should do this like by the iron. Secondly, I'm gonna come over here and Joe's gonna kill me because now he's gonna try to film around this. Let's try this. Let's move this over here a little bit. So now I'm gonna fold this up about a half an inch. It has a it has a mark for a quarter move of an inch. Move your cup. Oh, move my cup. I don't need that anyway. Um, so I folded mine about a half an inch. So you can fold it, hold it, and you can iron right on top of this. I've got my iron on here. I'm going all the way along 10 inches. And my iron's probably not hot enough because it's not on. There we go. Yep. It doesn't burn. It doesn't curl. It doesn't get too hot. It's awesome. Check it out. It makes this job so much easier. The hot press ruler. It's a good thing. And then I'm going to turn this one more time and press it up one more time. So I have a nice hem going across the bottom. Okie dokie. At that point, I'm going to just stitch along the bottom to hold this in place. Then we're going to add our decorative trim along the bottom here. So here again, you can use two things for this. Where did my little decorative trim piece go? Here he is, right here under my cup. Um, you could, as I indicated, you could use ribbon, you could use brick rack, you could use ball trim, whatever you'd like. Um, but I'm using the decorative um, fabric that matches the rest of my project. And you could run this through your binding easy, the little pink thing. Or again, you can use your hot press ruler. And that's what I did. So you're going to turn this under about an inch or about a half an inch going on both edges all the way along as you go. Now that my iron's nice and hot, look at how quick and easy it is. So we're going to go all the way along here and press this side up and then do the same on the other side, half an inch, so that you end up with a nice strip. You will then measure up uh, a an inch and three quarters and lay your strip all the way along and you can see you've got extra. So once you've pressed your whole strip, you're gonna lay it all the way along the edge and stitch along your folded edge here and here. So you're about an inch and three quarters up from the bottom. Okie dokie. Now you're gonna come back through and you're going to do the same on the sides and fold up your sides so that you end up with a piece that looks like this. So I came up an inch and three quarters, stitched on my bottom trim, and then again, I folded the, my sides with my hot um, ruler and folded those in twice, stitched close to the edge. Make sure that you back stitch at the bottom by your hem. Now the fun begins, because now you need to make pleats. This piece of fabric needs to be six inches long because that's how wide the top of your towel opening is. But they don't tell you how big to make those pleats. They don't tell you how many pleats to make, but I have the secret. So this is what you're going to do. The first thing you do, get out your binder clips, first of all, you're going to just fold, and I did this at a, a half an inch, so it'll vary a little bit. And I find that each one, because of sewing and whatever, and maybe even because of the width of the towel, we're not positive that every towel is exactly the same. So you might have to do a little bit of tweaking here and there. I just folded this back again about a half an inch. So I just folded my hem right on my hem going back. Alrighty. Then I took my ruler, and I actually came through. It's easier if you press this all the way through, but for time. Then I kind of come down and I kind of press it just to make my, make my little pleat stay nice. Then the secret is to lay your ruler on the fold that you just made at the two inch mark. Take and bring your fabric, bring your new fold, 
for your new pleat up to one and a quarter inches. Okay, so your pleat is about a one and a quarter inches wide. Put another, put another binder clip here to hold it in place. Then you're going to do the same thing all over again. Line the two inch mark of your ruler up on the, on the fold of the pleat that you just made. Pull your fabric over again to about one and a quarter inches. All right, look at how look good that looks already. So cute, so fun. Put your binder clip in. This is a different size one. How did you get in there? That's okay. Now I'm gonna to come to the other side, do the same thing again. Two inches to one and a quarter. Put a clip in. And one more time. Two inches to one and a quarter. And put in one more binder clip. Alrighty. Ta da! There you go. So now you should have about six inches. And you're going to check this out. You'll take it and you'll kind of check it out. See, look, at it's just about perfect. So I take it and I tuck it inside with my binder clips in there. Make sure it's right if I need to widen this at all. And when I sewed mine, I kind of flared mine out a little bit so that my towel kind of flares out a little bit as it's hanging. And so I even kind of just pull these out just a little bit if I need to. So if I know that this is right and that I'm happy with it, I'll pull this out and take this over to my sewing machine and stitch this all the way across. Then you'll come back and you'll pop it back in here and you'll stitch close to this edge. Ta-da! You're, you're really, you really, at this point, you're done. I also did the extra step of taking and just doing a top stitch all the way around. You can't really see it because it's in white. Um, all the way around um, because I also felt like that gave it a little bit more finished off look. Now I'm just going to flip it over. They showed to put a buttonhole in. Um, I'm just going to put a little decorative button and some Velcro. Life is a lot easier with Velcro than buttonholes. Um, and I find that because of the weight of the towel, a lot of times it pulls on that buttonhole and the Velcro just holds it a little bit nicer. And it's so cute. So you can make these to coordinate with your oven mitts and your trivets and or a table topper that you're making because really scrap fabric works absolutely fabulous with this. So that's my story on that. I hope you give these a try. They are a lot of fun to do. Um, we were out of the um, wine bags, the Quilt As You Go wine bags, and the Shopper totes that I showed you last month. They are all back in stock again. And we have, um, we also have tree skirts. So check those out online because they're a lot of fun to do and they go very quickly, very quick and easy to do. All right, where are we at back here? We did this, we did this. Um, this little guy is called uh, My Red Wagon Calendar because um, the panel has all of these cute little blocks to them. There's 12 different ones, one for every month, and they made a whole quilt out of it. So they made a quilt, like this is one block of the quilt, probably without the border on. But this is one block of the quilt. So there's a lot of flying geese in that project. So what we did is we just made one block. And what we're going to do is I'm adding a couple little clips to your kits. And every month you can switch out the center. So every month you can put a new little block in the center of your little quilt. Isn't that cute? That's a lot of fun. We still have to put the binding on. But we're almost there with that. So very fun, very easy project to do. The flying geese are actually um, paper pieced. So if you're not so good at flying geese, they're paper pieced, they're really easy to do, and they go very fast. So that's my story on that one. It's about two, 24 by 24 inches around. So it doesn't take up a lot of space and it's just a really fun little calendar thing. It's fun to have the kids switch out the calendar every month. This is machine embroidery. It's by Lunchbox Quilts. Ugh, we have so many in here, I can't even get it up. Lunchbox Quilts. Um, there's two different embroidery designs in the package. 
and it comes with a tree which I have not made yet but we I did get the the hat done so this was a lot of fun to do it's you embroider each one of these out individually so you'll put a six inch strip in your embroidery machine it'll embroider out the words you go to the next one so it went really quick I did this in an afternoon and then you're just adding the bats to the side and I added a little um, brick rack to, for the spider and it was so much fun so we have kits so when you purchase these you purchase the design and then you can purchase a fabric kit for the hat and then you can also purchase the fabric kit for the tree here's my tree right here so these are the fabrics that we're going to be uh, that will be in your kit for the tree so here's my inner border and my outer border and then these are going to be my strips that i'm going to put the words on and there's ornaments and all kinds of fun stuff so this is my project for this week hopefully i'll get it done so I'm going to work on that. So we'll have a fabric kit with these fabrics in to do the tree. So you could do the tree, the hat, or both. But it's also another great way to use up some scraps too, because you need a six inch by about 20 inch piece of fabric to do each of those words as they go along. So that's my story on that. Very fun to do. So I got all of that in. Then let's mosey on up to the front. This, I think I showed you, I'm not sure we had it done last month. Um, this is the Pinecone Lodge fabric. And it's kind of a, it has kind of an up north theme, so it's a lot of fun. And it, these are the panel pieces. And then you use just um, some of the go -withs to make stars and blocks to go in. Okay. So um, I'm not sure what size this is. This is about 56 by 79. So it's a nice... Um, generous lap quilt and it's like I said made out of that really nice um, two-ply flannel that we all love so much it's just so warm and cozy now that the nights are getting a little chillier I know it's not right is it so I'm gonna have um, Joe come over here and kind of take a close-up of some of these first we have the little the little mini quilt stands that the little circles so cute and I made for that from the Buttermilk Basin book a little hang, hanging um, project to go on there. And this is the Buttermilk Basin book. Lots and lots of really cute projects in here, as all of her those Buttermilk Basin projects are. Just so much fun. So I started with that, and then I thought, you know what? I need to change this out more often than just because this is Christmas so down here buttermilk basin has a monthly little um, tabletop these are actually table toppers and table runners and I found that and I thought oh these will be perfect for in there but they're a little bit small let me show you I know I've got it sitting up here somewhere under my stack right here so January is actually going to be skates so I'm starting with January, and this is what the skate one looks like. Really super cute. So we'll make up some kits, and in your kit will be, you will be able to either make, um, this is kind of a mug rug size. The actual size of this is, and I lost it. Here it is. There we go. This is the actual size. So this is the actual size of kind of like a mug rug. And then when I flip it over, this is half the size of the little table runner. So they're not huge and um, don't take a lot of fabric, but we needed that to be just a little bit bigger. So I'm, I enlarged it so that it would be this big and it will be just exactly that same size that's on there now. So the skates will go in the center and we will have beads and buttons and bubbles and all kinds of fun things in these little kits every month as we go along. So January, it's gonna be the skates. So you have the option of making the little table runner, the mug rug, or hanging it on the little metal stand, which I think is so cute. That's gonna go on our, that's gonna go on our, um, our mantle, honey. Won't that be cute? 
he is so excited. Oh my God. You just can't believe how the excitement in that man's eyes right now. So another piece of something on that mantle that has to be cleaned every once in a while. Ah, back here, voila. We have our new fabric called, and it's right below Joe, right in front here. It is called, uh, I forgot, Folk Art Flannel. So really fun, kind of another kind of up Northeast theme, but it has really great words. Um, so kind of a trailblazer kind of fabric, trees and fun things. It's a really nice winter fabric. It's not Christmas, so you can have it out all winter long, which is really nice. Again, it's the really nice two-ply flannel that's really nice and big and soft and, and cushy. I don't think we, we, we didn't get pillowcases made for this, but we will make some pillowcases to match this as well, because I think it'll make a beautiful pillowcase. This um, pattern is called Simply Done. It's very obviously very simple to do. Big blocks really shows up. The fabric's so nice. Again, we can get our binding done, but we're getting there. The kits will include everything that you need for the top and the binding. The great thing about this pattern is that the pattern has all sizes in. It starts with, this is the throw size. It starts, I think, with a lap, which is a little bit smaller than this, and goes all the way up to a king size. So it's really nice when the pattern has all the different sizes for your bed all in one panel or in one pattern. So really fun, really snug, nice and warm for the winter. I think I didn't talk about our little pill, our little Halloween pillows. We're getting there. It's almost Halloween now as we speak. But I got the center pillow done. And um, we have kits for that as well as a little thread kit that we put together. So if you had picked up the little pill, Halloween pillow pattern, that's the third little pillow that we have um, to go with that. I don't know that I'm going to be able to get any more done before Halloween. We're getting close, but I would like to do the one that says trick or treat. I think that would be really fun. Um, but we're getting close, but we could always make it for next Halloween. So that's those are the three pillows that we've gotten done for that. And then I think the final project that I have, do I, did I miss anything? I don't think so. Um, the final project that we have is um, this called the Big Charmer Quilt. This is made out of um, a, actually a layer cake. It was made out of a layer cake, even though it's called a Big Charmer, because a layer cake is a big charm pack. So this is made out of one um, layer cake pack and background. So really fun. It's really kind of a rainbow. It has a rainbow effect. This is Tula Pink's um, fabric, and it's called True Colors. So this is kind of a basic line that she has. Lots and lots of fun fabrics in there and lots of really pretty colors. So, and they're, they're bright without being like neon bright. They're just real, and, and, but, and they're not pastel-y. They're kind of that in-between color that's really, really fun. And of course, her colors are always really deep and, and very pretty. So this has been a very popular line. These have been going, this fabric has been going really well. Um, so we'll keep it in stock. And um, I hope you give this one a try. It was really fun. I don't think it took her, Debbie Yako made this. And um, she had a lot of fun with it. So I love how it starts out light here and then gets really bright, kind of like a rainbow effect on that quilt. So that's really fun, kind of a nice, teenager quilt or college age person's quilt so kind of a millennials quilt maybe um so that is our story on that well i hope that i have given you some fun ideas did i miss anything how are we doing how are we doing for time we good we good we were going to i think they were going to try to choose um the winners tonight but i'm not sure if that's happening or not we use Are we a, ready? I yeah, think, we could be I ready. Think, Are you ready, girls? Quick, comment, quick. <laughs> Joe's like, yes, yes, I want to hold on my feet. It's going to take a minute. Food, food. Yes. Okay. I don't think I've missed anything. Um, 
I'm going to have to do it after. There's She's going to do it after. That is okay. So tomorrow we will post the winners. So make sure that you comment tonight. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our Facebook page. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe. Comment. If there's anything that you want here tonight, remember that it's on our patchwork party portion say that five times fast, of our website for 20% off. So you'll use the code PP20. And those will be on our website for about a week for you to peruse through and look at, because I know everybody can't join us on Monday night. Remember that you can call us up on the phone to order. You can comment below and say, hey, I want one of these, and I need one of those. And we will we'll contact you tomorrow, or you can give us a call tomorrow, and we'll, we'll complete your sale. Or you can go right online and shop. Or, you know, we're here tomorrow at 10 a.m. So um, weekdays from 10 to 5.30 and Saturdays 10 to 3. And we still do curbside pickup. If you need to do curbside pickup, we're happy to do that. So I hope you enjoyed everything tonight. If you have any questions, um, comment below or shoot me an email or a text or any of those. Give me a call. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. So stay sewing, stay stitching, and stay safe and well. And we hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.